Welcome to part 3 of this GIMP scripting tutorial series. In this video we're going to be looking at hopefully trying to finish writing our script which generates random splatter brushes. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2 of this series yet, you should definitely watch those first. So go ahead and click on one of these two annotations right here to watch those. But if you have watched parts 1 and 2 already, then let's go ahead and get started with this video. So we're going to begin in our script foo console once again because we need to discuss one last feature of the scheme programming language that we haven't used previously. So this is going to be the let command, which we can access by just typing let asterisk like that. The purpose of this command is to create multiple variables at once, and they will be local variables, which means that they are only accessible within the let command, and they basically do not exist outside of the let statement. So the syntax for this is that we first put uh, opening and closing parentheses, and inside of these parentheses we will put whatever variables we want to define. So for example, we could define another variable x to be the value 5. So we enclose that variable and its value separated by a space in another set of parentheses. And then within that other outer set of parentheses, we can define another variable, say y, to store the value 7. So each variable and its value are enclosed in parentheses, and then the list of all of our variables is enclosed in parentheses as well. After we've defined our variables, we can go ahead and use them in some sort of commands. For example, we could say, what is 2 times the sum of uh, x and y? So one parentheses to close the plus, one parentheses to close the times, and then we need one more parentheses to close off our let statement parentheses all the way from the beginning. So now if I run this, as you would expect, the values of x and y are plugged in over here. You add them together to get 12, multiply by 2 to get 24. So the interesting thing is that these variables x and y are only accessible inside of this let statement. So for example, if I type x enter right now, then scheme is telling me that it doesn't know what the variable x is because x does not exist outside of the let statement. So it's a local variable that can only be used inside of the let statement. Okay, so we don't actually need the script foo console anymore. We're going to go ahead and return to our splatter.scm script file from the previous video. So hopefully you still have that hanging around in your scripts folder. And we're going to add our new script to this file. So we're actually going to have two distinct scripts. One that does the smooth threshold command and one that generates a splatter brush using the smooth threshold command. Two separate scripts both in the same document. So we're going to start off by defining a new script function just like we did in the previous video. So we're going to start off exactly the same way with our define command. And the name of this script, um, we would just call it script foo, say splatter brush, because it will create a splatter brush. The main difference between this script and the previous script in the second video is that the previous script required an existing image to work on. We had to already have an image open in order to use that image to run the smooth threshold command. But for this script, we actually don't want an image to work with already. We want our script to generate a brand new image. So we don't need an image or layer variables to start with. And we're going to create those inside of our script. However, we do want one other variable to work with. We want the user to be able to select the size of the canvas for their splatter brush. So we want to have one variable to uh, pass into our function, and we can just call that size. So next we're going to go ahead and use our let statement that we just discussed to define some new variables that we need inside of our function, namely the image and layer variables that we're going to generate brand new inside of our script. So we're going to type let asterisk, just as we did before. We're going to have an opening parentheses. And then we need to define our first variable, which we could call just our image variable. And we need to store in this the value of a new image which GIMP will generate for us. So we need to know how to generate a new image first. So let's go ahead and go back to our procedure browser, which was in the help menu. And we want to look for a function that generates a new image. So I happen to know that it's something like this. GIMP image new creates a new image with specified width, height, and type. So we just need to tell GIMP how big the image should be and what type of image it should be. RGB, grayscale, or indexed and it will create a brand new image for us. So if we go back to our script, then we can just run this command, gimp image new. The width and height are both going to be the size the user entered, so it's just going to be a square brush. 
And the type, if you remember back to my splatter brush tutorial from a long time ago, we need our brush to be saved in grayscale mode so that it will work properly. Just copy this here or just type the word gray or even just the number one actually. So if we just put gray right here and we can close off that parentheses. So this function creates a brand new image with the specified size and mode and then according to this it returns that image ID which we could then in turn store into our image variable to access it later. So the one caveat with this GIMP image new command and with some of the other commands in GIMP is that although it says right here in the description it says that it returns the image ID in fact it actually returns a list which contains that image ID. So it's a list containing only one element and that one element is the ID of the image. If we left this as it is right here, it actually would not be storing the image ID into our variable. It would be storing a list that contains the image ID into our variable. So what we want to actually do first is extract that image ID from the list and then store that value into our image variable, not the list itself. So if you remember way back to the first video in this series, we had this car function which we could use to extract the first value from a list. So if we do this, we need to close off some parentheses here first. So we have one parentheses to close off GIMP image new, second parentheses to close off the car, and then we need a third parentheses to close off the definition of our image variable. So what this does is it creates the new image, extracts that value from the list which that image function returned and then it stores that value into our image variable. Okay so we're not done there we need another variable to define and this is going to be our layer variable so we can do this in a very similar way we're going to need to use this car function again so I'll go ahead and type that first and this time instead of gimp image new it's just going to be gimp layer new gimp layer new create a new layer we just have to tell it what image the layer is going to be part of what the width and height are the image mode um, and other information there so what we can do is just type gimp uh, layer new the image that we're going to be adding this to is going to be the image that we just created right there the width and height are both going to be the size that the user entered the type of the layer should be again grayscale so we can cho choose gray image right here if you did gray A that would mean you would have an alpha channel on your layer but we actually don't need an alpha channel for this tutorial so we'll just choose gray image right there and copy that and paste it down here next is the name of the layer which isn't that important but it's just a little the name that appears next to your layer in the uh, layers dialog so we might as well just call this brush because this layer will eventually contain our brush that we're generating next comes the opacity of the layer we want it to be full opacity so that's 100 percent then the blend mode of our layer is just going to be normal mode we don't want like soft light or anything like that so we can just copy normal mode right here and paste that down there then we can end the layer new end the car which extracts the layer id from that list that it returns and then end the definition of our layer variable. Then we can jump down here and let's go ahead and put another parentheses to end the definition of our functions. Remember when we did it in the script fruit console we had parentheses around our x5, parentheses around our y7, and we had another set of parentheses enclosing the list of our variables that we generated. So we have, that's what these are right here. And then after those, we can put whatever commands we want to do using those variables. This is going to be where the actual body or functioning portion of our script will go, which will use those two variables that we just created, the image and the layer variables. So the first thing that we need to worry about is that even though when we created this new layer, we told it to be part of the image that we had previously created, if you look carefully in this description down here, it says that this procedure creates a new layer, but the new layer still needs to be added to the image, as this is not automatic. So we have to add the new layer to the image using the GIMP image insert layer command. Basically this is saying that even though we created a new layer, and even though it's supposed to be part of the image that we created, we haven't actually put it into our stack of layers yet. So we need to do that using the insert layer command. So we go to GIMP insert layer, and all we need to do is tell it what image to insert, what layer that we're inserting into the image, and then parent position basically tell us where to insert the layer if we have a bunch of layers, like for example you might want to put it at the top of the layers, you might want to put it at the bottom or in between two others. Parent is if you want to stick it inside of a layer group, but because we just want it to be at the top of the layers, not inside of any layer group, then we can just put zero for both of those, and you can read the description down here which explains why that is. So then what we do is just say GIMP image 
insert layer. The image that we're inserting it into is that, our image variable. The layer that we are inserting is the layer that we just created. And then we're not putting it inside of any layer group and we're putting it at the top of the stack of layers. Okay, so we've created our image, we've created our layer, we've inserted our layer to the image. The next thing that we should take care of is that by default, our new layer, I think, will be entirely black, or in some cases, it might just contain random colors and garbage. So what we want to do is start off by making sure that our image is a blank white canvas to create our splatter brush on. So to do that, we want to fill in our brush layer that we just created with white. We search for fill up here. Then we have this thing called GIMP drawable fill. Remember, a drawable could be like a layer or a channel or things like that. And we can just tell it what type of fill to do, and we're just going to use white fill right here to make our layer perfectly white. So we're going to add another command. We're going to say GIMP drawable uh, fill. And we want to fill in the layer that we just created, and we want to do white fill, so I'll just type it this time. Or you could copy and paste it from up here. Let's stop here and check to see that the script is working as we want. So before we can check this works, we need to actually tell GIMP at the end of our script to display the new image that we just created by using the command GIMP display new and just tell it to display the image that we created. And you could also search for that up in here in your procedure browser if you want to find some more information about that. Then we need to close off the parentheses from our let statement up here. And then we can close off the definition of our function right there. The last thing that we need to do is we need to register our script with GIMP, just like we did in the previous video. And this time we can save some time by just copying this whole thing, pasting it, and just changing the information that we need for this new script. The name of the script this time, instead of smooth threshold, it should be whatever, exactly um, whatever you called it in the definition of your function, splatter brush. The location and the menu for our script, instead of being the colors menu, we'll do file create splatter brush the description we can just say it generates a random splatter brush same name and copyright information it's July now so I guess I'll change that remember because our previous script required an existing image to work on and we could only use certain types of images we had to specify that here but because the script that we just wrote now does not work on any existing image rather it creates its own brand new image we actually don't need anything there so we just have empty quotation marks as a placeholder we also don't need these image and layer variables passed into our function because we're not working with an existing image or layer we're creating a new one inside of our script but remember, we do have this size variable that we want the user to be able to select. So we need a SF adjustment command for that. So rather than being our threshold value, this will be, say, our brush size. And just to make sure it's clear to the, whoever is using the script, we can let them know that the size is being measured in pixels. The default value for the brush size, I'll choose 400, but you could make whatever size you think is better for the default. Smallest size, I'm not really sure it would need to be smaller than 100 pixels. Biggest size could be, say, a thousand pixels or whatever values you want, and the rest of that we can leave alone. So we can go ahead and save this by doing Control S, and then we should be able to come back to Filters, Script Foo, Refresh Scripts, and now if I go to File, Create, oops, Create, Splatter Brush, choose our size, let's just use the default, it will create a brand new image with a blank white canvas that's 400 by 400 pixels just as I selected it to be. So that's how we create a brand new image in a script and next we will look at how to actually generate the splatter brush on this canvas. Well it took me a lot longer to get around to part 3 of this series than I had expected so I decided to go ahead and end this video here since I haven't finished the rest of it yet and this way I can upload part 3 uh, sooner for those of you who have been waiting for a few weeks for it um, and I can definitely finish the rest of this series in part 4 which I'm planning to have uploaded by this coming weekend. So thanks for sticking around if you're still following this series and I'll see you next time.